What is up guys? I'm Daddy Gamer Fred and welcome back to another Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Pokemon Let's Go Eevee discussion video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the latest rumors from 4chan. So please, everything in today's video, do take it with a grain of salt. But while this still is unofficially announced or maybe not even true, things that we're going to be talking about the, in the Let's Go games, they sound pretty believable in my opinion and sound like great ideas for these upcoming Pokemon Let's Go games. So that's why I wanted to do this video so without any further ado let's just jump right into it because we do have a few things to go over so here is the 4chan quote-unquote leak and let's start right at the top with the rumor of red being the pokemon champion in the let's go pikachu game and blue being the pokemon champion in the let's go eevee game i think this sounds believable in the first initial rumors about pokemon let's go pikachu and let's go eevee we got with that leak that red and blue were going to be in the game somehow so adding them as Pokemon champion to me is a easy way to just slide them in without having them play a bigger role in the main story outside of being the protagonist especially with red being a silent protagonist again this is a great way to nod to those games and not to you know even games like Pokemon Sun Pokemon Moon Ultra Sun Ultra Moon which had you fight these two guys in the post game at the battle tree also of course nodding to the fact that you did fight red and blue inside of gold and silver of course you fought red at the top of mount moon and blue in, inside of one of the gyms when you were going through kanto and, and to be honest i mean come on we're going back to kanto the home of red and blue i do believe 100 percent that we're going to be bumping into them somewhere in this adventure so them being the pokemon league champion to me is not crazy it's a it's easy thing to kind of actually speculate upon i do think this could be true most likely but i do think that nine times out of ten we're gonna bump into them and fight them along our journeys inside of the let's go game the next up on this rumor reel is the post game and uh, basically talking about the post game being named beyond evolution episode and you know we've seen the episode idea get flown around and dropped in to the rs games and they dropped another episode in the post game of the sun and moon and then the same thing with the team rocket episode in ultra sun and ultra moon so it's easy Easy for them to just you know consider a DLC or you know a post game stuff as an extra episode outside of the main game so the title of it does seem fitting what the Pokemon company usually goes for and it says when you finish the main game and become Pokemon League champion you be able to rebattle harder trainers around the world with higher level Pokemon and some with mega evolution tossed in as well now first things first I think this is a great idea and a great way to add tons of replay ability to the post game a easy way too if you think about it not adding a new area but just giving us the same people to fight but just with stronger teams with stronger battles i think this could be a way to you know spike difficulty and you know give us more challenging stuff to do in the post game as well as giving us a way to continually train our pokemon especially on a single player side of things i know a lot of people are gonna you know jump online and battle and stuff like that with these games and stuff or battle you know people on couch co-op or you know split screen or whatever the case may be so again having a way that a person playing single player could rush through the story because let's be honest the pokemon story is gonna be easy in a cakewalk so this is a way to again spike the difficulty very easily by just having you rebattle everybody throughout the whole world and just give them a higher tier you know pokemon levels or higher pokemon and we'll give people a option outside of just rebattling the Pokemon League all over and over again. Now they did drop in Mega Evolution saying that important faces will get Mega Evolutions and to me important faces sound like a gym leaders or maybe even Bill or Team Rocket. Standout characters who play important roles in the story somehow. Maybe Mr. Fuji as well. You would be able to battle them and they would now have Mega Evolutions added to their team which could be cool especially to see some people like you know a psychic gym leader 
having a you know Alakazam that can mega evolve and you know stuff like that. I think again that could be pretty cool and a good way to incorporate mega evolutions to the gym leaders after you completed the main game. Also as well it would be a great way for us to pick up mega stones and give us an incentive to go back and rebattle these gyms if we knew we we're gonna get a mega stone out of it in the post game. I think that's a great way to incentivize players to hey you got all these gym battles but now go and collect some mega stones at these gyms I think is pretty cool. Now the next rumor may be the most confusing to me anyway of the bunch and that is that we're gonna be able to transfer a whale from Pokemon Go into the Let's Go games and the whale is pink. Now there's a few things this could be and the first weird one that's you know is a possibility is that Wilmer and Warlord could possibly be able to be brought over from Pokemon Go into these Let's Go games and I say that because one they're a whale and their shiny form is pink and that is the only reason why I'm saying that and the reason why I don't think this could be a possibility to be honest with you is that because their Gen 3 Pokemon not even Gen 2 we're talking about Gen 3 so that's a two generation gap and we know that the Let's Go games have been confirmed to be only Gen 1 Pokemon so that will throw a huge wrench in the mix and to be honest who is asking for Walmart to be thrown into these games it's like that's not a fan favorite Pokemon so if they were to do something like pulling somebody from generation 2 or generation 3 you would think that they would draw in fan favorites maybe a starter or something like that but no the Wilmer to me doesn't fit into that bunch so I do think when I was reading this I did think wait okay now this is the fake part of the rumor but there is also the possibility that the new Pokemon that they tease at the launch trailer of the Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee games is a pink whale type Pokemon which could be possible I don't know it sounds a little bit lackluster if you ask me but I will say my judgment until we see this whatever pink well type Pokemon if it's indeed true I know I don't like to fall into that category and be like hey if it's pink it's a fairy type Pokemon but fairy type Pokemon don't have too much representation inside of the let's go game so maybe this is a way for them to add a fairy water type Pokemon I don't know but that is also very interesting that do categorize it as a pink Pokemon. And another thing I want to point out about, you know, this whale, we do know that the Pokemon code name for this game was Beluga or whatever, whatever the case may be. And that's a whale. And do I think it's coincidence that a pink whale is going to be be able to be received in the game? No, to be honest, I think it may be having something to do with it. Maybe they are adding a whale to the game and I... I'm down for it to me again it just sounds a little bit lackluster now lastly the last thing that comes to mind when I think about a whale inside of these generation one games is that classic sprite of a whale surfing inside of the classic gen 1 pokemon red blue and yellow games when you're surfing on a pokemon regardless of the pokemon you see a weird looking whale with a face almost it doesn't even look like a whale to be honest it's almost like a hump or a ghost with a face that's what i kind of remember it to being and looking at images now it does look like a you know regular face inside of a ghost or whatever the case may be but one of the things I was thinking about maybe this could be relating to is that we will get a in-game item in the game that makes like a Pokemon like Lapras like not even Lapras like no matter what Pokemon you get if you are have this in-game item turned on when you do go to surf it just looks like that sprite and I think that would be a cool gift that like hey if you have Pokemon Go you can send this gift over to your Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee games where you can choose to turn a Pokemon that you're surfing on into a whale or quote unquote this whale sprite and it could be blue it could be pink or whatever the case may be I think that would be pretty cool but again it's still the weirdest the weirdest form of words a whale that can be received from go is pink it's like what does that mean
Next up on the rumor wheel is that a special gift for completing the Pokedex is a pendant that increases different colors in the overworld. Now, obviously, if you play any Pokemon game, you would know that this is kind of referring to the shiny charm. Maybe in the Let's Go games, this is actually represented on your character, which will be pretty cool. And the first time this will actually happen, that you can actually wear the shiny charm as an in-game item. You have it around your neck, it will be visible on your character i do think that would be pretty cool if this is the case also that we will see an increase different colors in the overworld meaning you know the pokemon will have different colors which again are shiny pokemon which again is basically like every other pokemon game as far as the shiny charm is confirmed so i do think this is kind of confirming that there is that reward of completing the pokedex you get the shiny charm so shiny hunters can actually be excited to complete the pokedex to know that they can actually have a better chance of getting shinies in this game because I think shiny hunting is going to be fun in this game because it's going to be a very unique take on especially finding Pokemon because this is going to be a first time we're going to be seeing Pokemon in the overworld and not just random battle encounters. The next one up on the rumor wheel is, is one that's again very weird. It doesn't sound like it could be implemented in the Pokemon game. It sounds like a dream come true to be honest, but let's go over it. It says play as important trainer like Sabrina only on the online hub through beating them in campaign first lots of unlockables now when I read this again I contributed to another leak that came out about the 2019 games I have a video up on the channel already about that bunch of leaks that talked about the 2019 games and then it also in that group of leaks or rumors or whatever the case may be they stated that the 2019 games will have an online hub similar to to Dragon Ball Z Xenoverse games. Now, if you don't know, Dragon Ball Z Xenoverse has a weird online hub, but it's basically a open world, quote unquote, open city. It's not a, a huge open world, but it's a city environment where you can walk around shops. You can see tons of other players in the same lobby. I believe it's up to 30 other players you can see at once in the lobby. And each player can design their character. They can have a custom character. They could play as one of the characters in the Dragon Ball Z universe and it's pretty cool if you ask me it's a great way to interact with people one-on-one -on -one. you can see randos and you can see people that are on your friends list you can engage people talk to them to, to have battles in in the dragon Ball Z universe game so i do think that that will contribute well to a pokemon game where you can ask people to battle ask people to trade put out a you know open call for a battle or put out a open call for a trade that you know i need snorlax i need somebody that's going to give me a Snorlax, you know, and then the person that wants to trade the Snorlax can see that in the in the lobby and then, you know, potentially give you the trade. Now, them saying important trainers like Sabrina, you could play as in this open world hub. Again, it to me seems believable because of the fact that this would just be a skin over your character. So it would just be basically taking the in-game model for Sabrina they already have, but letting you control it while you're in this open hub. It doesn't mean you are Sabrina it's just giving you a option to change up your avatar to Sabrina inside of this online hub only and again I think this is just gonna be appearance based I don't really think this is gonna give you her team quote-unquote I do think that may be an option especially for if we're thinking about two players where you want to battle somebody cops co-op with one copy of the game and that person doesn't have a safe file that person doesn't have Pokemon caught leveled up and stuff like that but you want to battle them anyway and they want to use a set team and one of those set teams could be gym leaders I could see them doing something like that that is again kind of believable kind of something like we had via Pokemon Stadium but everything was unlocked you didn't kind of really need to do the story mode to unlock it but I understand them hiding some of that content behind the story mode because they want you to play through the story mode and not you know get spoiled by anything it's again it's a weird rumor it's a weird leak again it's a weird idea but I do like it and I do think it will, you know, add tons of content, tons of replayability to the Let's Go games. So I do hope that this is brought in to the Pokemon world, especially with the last sentence of it. And it's saying, you know, lots of unlockables. It's something that we all crave, you know, playing a game. And then, you know, after we completed the main story, seeing other stuff that we can potentially unlock by doing challenges and stuff like that. That gameplay hook is addicting. And I love doing it, especially in Pokemon games where, where I complete the 
the story. Once I complete the story, I complete the Pokedex. Once I complete the Pokedex, complete post game. Once I complete post game, I make sure that I collect every single collectible in the game, even if it's Mega Stones or whatever the case may be. I make sure that I collect it all. Now, the last piece of information on this rumor wheel is basically that powerful moves can be motion controlled and unleashed with Joy-Con. Trailer coming for those on the 6th, and I do think they mean the 6th of September, so that is literally a couple of days away from recording. I'm recording this on the 3rd, so I do think that trailer is indeed coming. Now, what they say powerful moves can be motion controlled and unleashed with Joy-Con, I think they're hitting to the fact that Z moves are going to be introduced for the Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee games, which wouldn't be too surprising. Z moves were a big thing inside of Pokemon Sun and Moon, Ultra Sun and Moon. We see Mega Evolutions be introduced about last month into the Let's Go games. Now we do know that Z moves and Mega Evolutions did not exist in the first generation where this is basically a remake of. So I do think they adding Z moves, adding Mega Evolutions is a way to kind of spice things up, especially with motion controls and Joy Cons. It kind of makes sense, especially for the tons of little kids that are going to be playing this game. They're going to love and eat that shit up. The fucking dances they got to do as far as to do these Z moves. Maybe they make it where if you do it 100% correct, the Z move is more powerful. I do hope there is a way to turn this off so I won't look like I, a idiot, you know, playing Let's Go and, you know, flinging a Z, the Joy Con around in the circle or whatever the case may be to trigger a Z move and me worry about doing it extra perfect so I can get a critical hit or whatever the case may be. I really do hope they can turn this off somehow in the game where you don't have to actually do this motion controls because if that is the case, oh my God, I'm pulling my hair out. I'm already pulling my hair out because there's no wild battles. I'm already pulling my hair out because you can't turn it off the regular motion controls. You actually have to play it even in Joy-Cons. Even if you have the Joy-Cons in the Nintendo Switch, you still have to use motion controls, which is bothering me, but I know I'm getting used to it. And it's a Pokemon game. I'm a, I'm a bite the bullet and enjoy it regardless. But I just, please, 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 Pokemon gods, please let us turn off motion controls. And again, the last little bit of information is that the trailer is coming out on the 6th. Now we do know that we're about to hit a Nintendo Direct, which a lot of people are saying that Nintendo Direct is maybe gonna happen on September 11th. I'm gonna do a video on why I do think that September 11th date is going to happen for the Nintendo Direct. And that just basically because the next big Nintendo Switch eShop update has been data mined and it's actually up on Nintendo's website that there's gonna be downtime on September 11th and it's gonna be a long period. It's gonna be almost a whole day. So you would think that they would need a lot of time to put the you know Nintendo Switch online service and stuff like that or something big is, or something else is gonna drop that day. And what a lot of people are guessing or speculating is that the Nintendo Switch online service demo trial may you know be implemented that day or whatever the case may be. But September 11th seems like a big date in Nintendo's book that they need a long period for downtime. And I do believe we're gonna get the Nintendo Direct that day. But you guys know the Pokemon company, they don't play by Nintendo's rules. If they're gonna drop a trailer on the 6th, I think it is gonna be on the 6th before the Nintendo Direct so they won't step on the toes of other games like Smash, whatever that's gonna be highlighted in this Nintendo Direct. Now, that was all my thoughts about these rumors. And of course, this is an open discussion to you guys. Let me know in the comment section below your thoughts on all of the rumors that this post entitles. I'm going to have a link to this post in the description below if you want to check it out. Shout out to Jinx Club, Serena. I'm going to have her Twitter in the description below as well. I want you guys to follow her because this is where I got the heads up that this was actually a thing. She posted on Twitter. I've seen it. I was like, whoa. And I read through it and I was just like, whoa, I need to do a video on it because this got me excited. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'm going to see you guys on the next one. Like always, guys, I'm Daddy Gamer Fred on Instagram and Twitter, and you guys can bring the conversation there. I'm the American Gamer in Switzerland right here on YouTube, and yes, I'm going to be doing a ton of videos just like this one. So if you enjoy, please hit that subscribe button. Also, hit the like button. It does help me out a ton as far as growing the channel is concerned. Ring the bell if you want to be notified on the next time I drop a video. Peace. I'm going to see you guys on the next one.